Welcome everyone, today we have a new guide for Diablo 4, and in this video we have tons of new information about the endgame of Diablo 4, including the Tree of Whispers, and also including the Paragon levels, the Renowns, and also the Helltide event, with different loots and also different items we can work on in the endgame. We'll also be looking into a massive amount of information about the PvP, including getting new mounts, new legendaries, and some new skins from the vendors, and also a special blood marking which allows you to be the most hated and most wanted player on the map, and with a lot of loot bonus. So we'll have a look at a lot of new information, together with the world boss drops and also different themes, and even where you can get some additional mounts at the start of the game, on the first zone of course. And also we'll look into additional information about the Nightmare Dungeons. So here we have additional information about the dungeons and special mechanics which can be very interesting. And finally, we do have additional notes on the Paragon level farming with where you can get bonus experience and how to get to level 100 the fastest way at the end game. Now you might be wondering, hey Matt, didn't you just have a video previously about this and why are you finding more information? Well, it all started with this particular tweet from Diablo official Twitter. So it was said tomorrow, which is actually today, we'll be getting into the new phase of Diablo. And a lot of the developers were tweeting that this is going to be the progression and in-game system for Diablo 4. And here you can see Adam Fletcher tweeting and he says today's the day. And as I look and I look everywhere, people will say this may be an Apple full stroke. <laughs> I was like, no, don't be like that. So I was too excited to wait for the release. So I decided to research everywhere on the net to find more information about the end game. Of course, when the official release of the Diablo 4, you know, the teasers and also questions about the progression and also end game comes out, we'll have a special summary video for this and we'll talk about this in more details. So hopefully this is not an April Fool's joke. So let's get over to our video. I'll give you guys lots of information to get excited and also prepare for the end game. Now, if you guys haven't seen my previous two videos, we really look into the end game from level one to level 100 for the progression of items and also how you unlock different tier levels and also end game details. I really do recommend having a look at the previous two videos. They're really base ground to understand what's happening in the end game. And this one serves as a more detailed information video as I do more research and get excited for the official information, right? So let's have a look at the first one. The first one previously, I was calling this bounty hunting. The official name will be the tree or the whispers of the dead. So briefly going through this particular event, it's very similar to the Diablo 3 bounty event. They will provide you with green favors. Upon getting 10 green favors, you can exchange this one at the Tree of Whispers. What you want to notice is, for this particular theme of the end game, there will be icons on your map, and the icons will range from pink to dark. And the darker the colors will be, the more favors you get for this particular theme or mechanics. And once you are full on favors, you want to travel to the Tree of Whispers, which is at a swamp location, which hopefully they tell us where it is in the official teaser zoom. And this will provide you with bonus experience and also loot box. There's two things to highlight. One thing we'll talk about whether you can abuse this experience reward to get more experience. We'll talk about this at the end of the part about the experience farming. The second thing is with a loot box. It's, it, it was said that there is a higher chance of getting certain legendaries and also getting nightmare sigil keys which is for the Nightmare Dungeon. Now the loot box can also contain specific item parts, which can be a legendary helmet or maybe two-handed weapon that you're looking for. So this could be really good as a starting of the farm for the end game. And here you can see some of the notes I found as some of my viewers were sending me a lot of information. Now the second part we want to highlight is we talk about the Reno on the previous video. So one thing to highlight is about 40% of Reno completion for region, you'll be able to get your two skill points. About 60% completion of the Reno, you can get full Paragon points. Initially, I was worried you have to get 100% Reno completion, and that will be over 2,100 points. But notice that we're looking for level 3 for 800 points, and finally level 5 for 1,500 points for all the goodies. It's not a really big deal to get the maximum obos, but it's nice. So here is the highlight. You're looking for about 40% and also 60% completion. <laughs> Now, if you guys are looking for the notes for what I have in the video, make sure you check the description for the timestamps and also for all the notes and all the guides we have. So the next one, we have pretty similar information to the Helltide. I did have a look. So as for the Helltide, one thing to notice is similar to the Tree of Whispers, the Helltide seem to provide exclusive item slots. So on the chest, before you open the chest, you will provide us with information on what you might be getting. You might be getting a two-hand weapon or you might be getting pants or helmet. So this is actually a specific item slot chest which will provide you with a really high chance of legendary drop. 
And of course, during the Helltide, in order to open the chest, you have to loot the Amberheron Cinders by killing lots of monsters. And about 50 Cinders will open one chest. Now, one thing to highlight is, if we die during the invasion of the Helltide, your Cinders will drop on the ground. Very similar to Diablo 2, I think you have to run back to pick up your gears. And here you have to run back to pick up your Cinders, which is a nice, nice, nice thing. I like it, <laughs> but hopefully it doesn't disappear, right? Or hopefully other players can't loot it. Now, there will be a roaming boss that was said to be a little more challenging for single player to take it down. So it is recommended to play in a party, but if you have single players, that's okay too. And finally, you do really want to participate in the Helltide because it provides a lot of limited resource for crafting. One of the biggest examples will be the Fiend Ropes, and this is over here. It is used to reroll legendary affixes, which will be really important in the late game. And of course, we have lots of information now where I got my notes from. One major one is coming from the closed beta and also all the information and also Maxwell GG. I have the links for you guys if you want to have a deeper read. Now we have talked about the random encounters here. Nothing too new about this one. So if you want to have a look, look at the previous video. We'll skip this one for now. One of the biggest highlights, of course, is open world PvP. I had heard a ton of tons of information and have the look around. This one looks amazing. So we'll briefly talk about this before. There will be a special zone for Diablo, which you can have non-stop PvP. But the more detail is, you can be farming for legendary gears apparently as well during the beta. And the monster density is massive. This hordes of monsters kill, and compared to the non-PvP zone, this is like a heaven for players to farm. Now, while killing the monsters and also players in the PvP zone, we will get something called the Seed of Hatred. And this is a special PvP currency, which has to be converted into the red dust, I believe, at the altar. And while you convert in altar, everyone can see you convert in altar, and everyone can attack you. So you might be expecting lots of campers or even groups of campers at the altar to kill you for your items. Now, once you have this converted currency red dust, it is said that you could come to the PvP vendor to get legendary gear gambles to go for cosmetics, mounts, and also different skins. So this is actually really rewarding because you'll be farming monsters with high density. You get lots of more jobs and you get lots of more rewards for doing the PvP zone. Now, while a player is in the PvP zone, it was said that there may be a special marking called a block marking, which a player can toggle on and off by your own choice. Once you toggle this on, you'll become hostile to everyone. And this actually have a benefit. This will provide you with a bonus seed of hatred drops from monsters, and likely from players. And the players who doesn't want to do this can still play with other players because they can't hit each other. So their spells are, no, their spells are friendly. Now they can still kill monsters for additional loots, but the drop rate is much lower than the player who activate the killing mark. And at the same time, if a player doesn't have the mark activated, you're still at risk of being attacked by PvP players. Even though you can't hit them, they can still hit you, right? So this is the scary part. If you're playing like a, like a PvE game in the PvP zone, you can be vulnerable and a target to those players. Now, it was said there is a possibility for a bounty for players who goes berserk and kills everyone. For the top leader of the PvP zone, you might see a special icon and also a special bounty might be placed on the head. And this means other players who group up and kill this player will treat this player like a boss player, and you'll get additional loots for killing this player. Now, finally, it is likely the PvP zone doesn't have an entry level, but we have to enter at our own risk. You might see a level 100 PvP camper who's maxing gears, who's just here to kill the new players, right? I remember in Dia not Diablo, I remember in World of Warcraft, I was in STV, and I was like, hey, this place looks great. And then a rogue came and like, two jab me. I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah, good times. This actually really sounds really fun. So let me know what you guys think about PvP. There's a good reward, there is a lot of risk taking, and there's even more mechanics. And this reminds me of World of Warcraft, where I was like, oh no, I'm so new, stop killing me. The guy was literally camping my body like four times, and I waited for half an hour and he left. Now as we go further, one thing I forgot to mention about the endgame is that although the world boss might not drop the best legendaries or the higher grade of legendaries, which if you don't know, make sure you look at the previous two videos. There's three different grades for legendaries. Secret, which I keep typing into scared, and also Ancestral. So. Over here, we do want to remember that the gem socking or the gear socking item that is still dropped by the world boss. So you still want to kill some world boss for this particular item. At the same time, the difficulty of the world boss, it is said to be not as difficult. So if you're playing hardcore, if you don't want to die so many times, it is said later stage of the game, as players get more items, the boss should be less challenging and you should die less often. 
Now, as we keep going, you can see I'm skipping a lot. This is because we summarized a lot of things on the previous video. So here, what I want to show you guys is a player or players were reported on this particular Reddit post. Actually, this is actually for Jakey's Nine, and a lot of players have reported they have found a ghostly horse from the first zone of the stronghold. So this is actually a special stronghold event for clearing the level twenty-five stronghold in the first zone of the Fracture Peaks. And if you want a new mount, guys, try your luck on this one, right? So don't miss any of the stronghold event. You might be getting something special, like the skins of the month, or maybe a special month. Now over here, we also have some new information on the nightmare dungeons, which will be in-game farming for Diablo 4. So we have talked about the first pass briefly. Now the new pass is there will be limited revives for those dungeons. So what that means is, if you die too many times, you might be wasting a sigil key, and you might not be able to upgrade this one for higher dungeons. So dying is actually a big, big warning. So you don't want to die as much. So you can't just go all damage. Now, it is also said the monsters are boosted by the level of the sigil keys. So the sigil keys can range from level one to level one hundred. The example I was given is at level sixty-six for a sigil key. A monster will be the monsters in the dungeon will be given to level one hundred twenty, while the player that's playing the game the maximum level is one hundred. So this is a much greater challenge as you go into high levels, and you do get higher rewards and also higher drop rate. Now, if you guys are a little concerned about the difficulty of the dungeons, we should remember that players will become more powerful with different uniques and also new legendary aspects as you get into the end game, and also more paragon level perks and also more gear grades. You know, the sacred grade and also the ancestral grade. Now there seems to be a different random themes in the nightmare dungeons. One of the example I was given is that players will have a random chance periodically to take massive amount of damage and can one shot players and kill them, right? And because there are limited revives in those dungeons, players will also giving a damage immunity shield every few seconds. So this makes the dungeon more challenging to survive. And together with all the effects and also special effects on the monsters, this makes the dungeon more interesting. Now, finally, we have some additional summarized information for the Paragon level. So we have talked about those information previously as well. We talk about the sources of the Paragon levels and also additional Paragon points. We can get up to twenty Paragon points for clearing the Reno. And if you guys remember previously about the Reno's, you just need about sixty percent completion for the zone to get one thousand five hundred Reno's to get your full Paragon points, adding up to twenty points for all of the zones. Now the interesting part about farming for experience for Paranga level is that there is a lot of source of bonus experience at the moment with what we can see in beta. There might be more ways to get more experience. So here are some of the listed ways: five percent bonus experience for using elixirs, and this could be even higher. So what I want to show you guys is we have some notes. So you can see this is from Max or GG. This is all the crafted potions elixirs that's available during beta. And those also are weaker elixirs. Maybe we get average elixirs or even superb or superior elixirs that might can provide us with maybe ten percent more experience. And over here, you guys know that five percent more experience when standing next to another player. And if you party with this player, you do get ten percent more experience. So if you party with players in the dungeons, this can be really good. Now the experience does not stack between the five and also ten percent. And finally, the previous video that. The second previous video, we talk about bonus experience from different world tier levels, so different difficulties. So twenty, one hundred, and also two hundred bonus experience for doing tier level two and three, and also four. Now, if you guys remember earlier, we talk about bonus experience and also how you can get experience from different quests and also different chests. So my question is, does the bonus experience you do from here work when you open a chest, or maybe you get rewards from the Tree of Whispers? Now, if that works, maybe we can change the world difficulty to the max and drink lots of potions, get a friend to party you for tons of bonus experience as you retain those quests. Or maybe that's just too much work. So we'll look into that during the lunch. Now, again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video because I wasn't in the closed beta or anything. We're looking for all the information that is available, and hopefully we'll get more official information because it seems like today is the day, right? And this better not be an Apple Fools joke. Now, before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too, and she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.